Hello there, my pointy-eared friends, and welcome back to another video on the ancient race of the Eldar in Warhammer 40k. It seems that many of you, during the previous Craftworld video, actually wanted to learn more about the individual Craftworlds themselves. At least that was the option that won the vote. So today we shall do exactly that, by covering one of the most famous Craftworlds in the 40k universe. And no, it's not Ulfwe or Alaitok, but this time Biltan, arguably the most martial of them all. Do stay until the end as well and vote on the next Eldar topic. I am your host, the Farseer GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The people of the Biltan craft world constantly strive to return to the glory days of the ancient Eldar Empire. Consumed by bitterness, they wage an endless campaign of xenocide against those foolish enough to cross their path. The world rune used by Biltan stands for the principle of reincarnation of Eldar souls from the warp in new bodies, a fate that once defined every Eldar in the days before the fall. The name of this world stone loosely translates in Rebirth of Ancient Days. The story of the Biltan craft world begins, like all the others arguably, with the fall of the Eldar, the dying days of the Eldar Empire when the monstrous birth of Slanesh shattered their entire civilization, and the survivors fled in disarray across the galaxy. Having barely survived the catastrophe, the Eldar of Biltan refused to give in to despair and soon afterwards they joined Craftworld Ayandan's cause. For thousands of years afterwards, Ayandan and Biltan fought as inseparable allies, their distant Craftworlds united by the common goal of defeating Chaos. Although the Eldar forces were relatively few, when considered on the galactic scale, their mastery of the webway allowed their fleets and armies to span the stars with a speed and surety that no other race at the time could emulate. As Biltan purged the western arm of the galaxy, so did Ayandan drive Chaos from the eastern rim. Tirelessly defending the Exodites and Maiden worlds, they hoped would one day form the core of a new Eldar civilization. And then came the Tyranids. Ayandan had encountered these creatures before, but those had only been the tendrils of the hive mind's awareness, groping blindly through space. Now, Ayandan was standing exposed before the onset of the entire high fleet. In their pride, the Eldar of Ayandan underestimated the threat. They believed that their might could weather even this storm, that their armies and fleets could vanquish the Great Devourer. Alas, they were terribly wrong, as even Biltan failed to aid them. But more on that story when we talk about Ayandan. Each craft world carries the seeds of Eldar culture. They are not all identical by any means, as each one reflects the cultural heritage of its long-dead Eldar world of origin. Biltan is renowned for the strong warrior ideals of their people. For the Eldar of Biltan, the way of the warrior, the life stage that encompasses the aspect warriors of the Eldar, is considered the first step upon the Eldar paths. Upon reaching physical maturity, a Biltan becomes an aspect warrior and only once they have fulfilled that role can they continue along the path. As a result of this cultural predilection, the Biltan craft world is famous for their military and aggressive warrior ways, and for the huge number of aspect warriors it maintains, who often incorporate the traditional green and white colors of the craft world into their armor, as well as the colors of their aspect. The Eldar of Biltan have a strong martial honor code, and believe that the best way to die is in battle fighting the enemies of Biltan or the Eldar in general. The Eldar of Biltan are honorable warriors, who have taken it upon themselves to rebuild the lost glory of the ancient Eldar Empire via the destruction of lesser races like humanity or the orcs, who have, in their eyes, usurped the galaxy. They believe it glorious to die fighting the enemies of the craft world and the Eldar people. At the center of the Biltan craft world is the Chamber of Heroes, where the spirit stones of dead aspect warriors are put. Farseers often come to this place to consult the dead of the craft world on their proposed course of action. The dead of a particular battle that the warriors of Biltan participated in are arranged all together, 
and are often referred to by the name of the battle in which they fell. For example, the so-called Dead of Chorus fell fighting the forces of chaos on an ancient Eldar colony world of the same name. As the people of Biltan see it, when the time comes for the Eldar to reclaim what is rightfully theirs, then the Paradise Maiden Worlds and the planets of the Exodites will be the first staging grounds for their conquest. Due to this, the Biltan Eldar see any colonization by other races on these worlds as a threat to the future growth of the reborn Eldar Empire. The incautious explorators of the Imperium have often made planetfall on an Exodite world, only for their successors to find nothing but corpses, which had been cut to pieces and subsequently picked clean by indigenous scavengers. The details of the first contact between the Imperium of Man and the Biltan craft world are, at best, fragmentary. While it is likely that the forces of the God Emperor encountered Biltan during the Great Crusade of the 30th millennium, the first formally detailed encounter was in the late 32nd millennium. An Adeptus Mechanicus explorator fleet was in the process of settling the uninhabited world of Gavris Minor when they came under attack. The Mechanicus archaeologist teams had barely begun to unearth alien architecture when the Eldar assaulted them with inhuman ruthlessness. The startled adept sent a desperate cry for help before all communication was lost. In accordance with their settlement schedule, the teams had built several preliminary fortifications. However, under the ferocity of Biltan's assault, these meager preparations were useless and they were forced to retreat back to their landing craft in the hope of withdrawal. The deadly Xeno's weapons and highly specialized warrior slaughtered the fleeing adepts and their Skitari protectors alike in carefully planned and meticulously orchestrated attacks. The landing craft that did escape the planet found their fleet burning in orbit, slaughtered by the swift Eldar attack craft. Their main ship crippled and without warp capability, the surviving explorators were abandoned to their fate, the Eldar leaving as quickly as they had arrived. The only communication given by the Eldar throughout the entire incident was an ominous broadcast delivered to the floundering landers. The soil of this planet is not for your feet to tread. Only death awaits you here. When elements from the Imperial Navy arrived to investigate, only one of the explorator craft remained drifting lifelessly among the molten wreckage of the settlement fleet, its crew long having been starved of oxygen and food. Reviewing the vidlogs and Vox recordings, Admiral Kieslik ordered all Imperial vessels out of the area as fast as possible, before marking the planet by warning buoys, declaring it unsuitable for settlement. Accurate records of the episode of Gavris Minor have long since been sealed by the Ordo Zenos, although it is interesting to know that, despite four subsequent settlement attempts by other explorator teams, Gavris Minor is still a contested world, and bears the same sanction as given by Admiral Kieslik eight millennia before. The Eldar's way of making war is very much akin to a child's puzzle. Composed of interlocking pieces of the puzzle, just like the Eldar war machine, it is of little value if any of the pieces are missing. The army of the Eldar functions by dozens of mutually supporting elements combining, creating a dangerous and effective fighting force. An army composed of several warrior aspects becomes a dire menace due to their diversity and speed, and it is this variety making the Swordwind of Biltan the threat that it actually is. The combat capability of Biltan is comprehended well, for while victories over the Eldar are honored and celebrated, Victories against the Biltan Eldar are very rare. In the Eldar tongue, the term Bazakain defines their assembled war host. This translates literally into Low Gothic as Sword Wind, Tempest of Blades, or Frozen Leaves and Falling to Cut. Regardless of how you call it, the Sword Wind is also the name given to the manner in which the Biltan Eldar wage war that is, a single attack relying on the immense fighting skills and overwhelming firepower of their aspect warriors to annihilate all the enemies in one swift blow. The Swordwind is most effective against the favorite target of Biltan, fledgling colonies ill-prepared for the carefully orchestrated onslaught of the Swordwind. 
What makes this behavior unusual is that Bilton is virtually the only craft world to behave in this way. Experts of the Ordo Xenos believe that the Bilton is attempting to take back the Eldar realm by force of arms, striking out to claim worlds they believe are their own. The Swordwind utilizes the very best weapons and technology available to the Eldar military, with deadly energy weapons mounted on transport vehicles and the well-armored and armed warriors inside. However, for all the speed and precision of the Swordwind, there is a fatal flaw in their method. The very nature of this tactic revolves around a rapid strike that is not bogged down in protracted combat, nor caught up in a war of attrition as so often used by the Imperial Guard. While the Aspect Warriors are swift and deadly beyond belief, they lack the physical endurance of the Adeptus Astartes or the great numbers of the Imperial Guard. Death Corps of Krieg happy noises in the background. So, with today's part of the story at an end, we can now indulge in a small poll. However, this particular poll is more about how you would like me to approach the topic than some flat-out options like before. So, it would be like this. Would you like me to... Option A. Cover each of the craft worlds in detail before moving on. Or Option B. Make an overview of each major craft world and then mix that up with other topics. I'm only asking this way because some craft worlds are pretty lore rich, and covering each one could take a lot of episodes and might end up being a little boring. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the craft world of Biltan, its warriors, and a bit of its history for today. As I just said, Biltan is a very low-rich craft world, and just its history could take about three episodes, which is why I made the poll as I did. Either way, are you a fan of Biltan and their fighting approach to everything? Or do you think they're too brash and prefer another craft world? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do feel free to share any opinions or thoughts in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a healthy day. The blessings of Isha be upon you.